Hello, my name is James Van Prague, and I am a spiritual medium. Many of you might remember me from uh, TV shows, Larry King Live, Oprah, uh, 48 Hours, a lot of television, a lot of radio, and many books on mediumship. I've written about 14 books. The first one, Talking to Heaven, was a New York Times bestseller for many weeks. And um, I am here to, to really talk about an incredible being, Leslie Flint, who I was able to meet back in the mid-80s. And I met him through my mentor, Brian Hurst. And Brian Hurst is also a medium. Uh, I moved to Los Angeles from New York, and I was working a temporary job uh, trying to break into showbiz to be a sitcom writer. And I ended up working at William Morris Agency. And a lady there, my supervisor, said, you want to go see a medium? And I said, who's that? And she said, someone talks to dead people. I didn't believe in that. To make a long story short, she remembered Brian Hurst. And then this wonderful relationship began, and he recognized my mediumship skills and talents, and really was my mentor at the very beginning, and introduced me to Leslie Flint. Uh, I sat with Leslie three times at a seances in Hollywood, California, and uh, had very good times with Leslie, and lunches with Leslie, dinners with Leslie, through Brian Hurst. It was a lovely time. He used to come out all, every summer. So I sat with Leslie in the seances um, three different times, and of course, like everybody in the seance room, you want someone to come through for you, but you don't know what's going to happen. Um, it was always so, I remember very distinctly, Bram, his friend Bram, his partner Bram was always there, and a joy, funny, laughing, great sense of humor, quickest, quickest wit, a card, really card. And I remember once before a seance started, before everybody got there in the room, about 10 people was the amount, the maximum, Leslie and I were alone in the living room of this uh, place, and she said to me, James, James, a very low voice, James, and he said, see that box over there? And that was a television set. He said, one day you're going to use that. You're going to spread the word at that, that, that. And you're going to use that, but use it wisely. And his words came to pass. Of course, I've been on television many times. I've been on shows and so forth. So I went with, uh, into these seances in this dark room, dark room at the time. Didn't know anything about it. And I remember the first time it happened uh, where voices appeared. Mickey first came in. How are you all doing? With his voice. I thought, this is crazy. I thought, this is very strange. And I'm, I'm open to put it strange. And I remember the people that came through, the spirits that came through, all were British, British voices. And my thought was, maybe this he's a ventriloquist. They'd be throwing these voices, because they're all British. So if there was an American-sounding voice or another country, it may be, be more believable, but it wasn't. So I was a little bit skeptical. Uh, the second time we began to sat, and we just sat for a little bit because they said there wasn't enough energy there or power. And the third time I sat... Uh, that was two years after that. I remember we're sitting there, and um, I was like, everybody hoping. Uh, I was hoping someone would come through. And I didn't think it was going to happen. In the middle of this room, all of a sudden a Frenchman's voice came through. He said, I want to talk to James. I want to talk to James. James! And screaming, you're a psychic, a sensitive. James, James, we have many here who believe in you, my friend. One day you're going to help the world. You're going to write a book. You're going to travel over water. Many, many here believe in you. And he was named, his name is Andre, he gave me his full name, which of course I looked up because very cynical, skeptical person that I am. And I found that he did say he was uh, involved with the Paris Opera. And I found that he was indeed a musician there, a writer, and a, an actor, an artist. And uh, he said in that seance that we recognize within you that you're sensitive, you're going to help many people. And then I was overwhelmed by it all, I really was. But the first thing I, I, I said to him was, oh, thank you, is my mother there? Because I want to talk to my mother, who just recently passed. Your mama, your mama, hold on, we get your mama. And he said, your mama is here. She talks about a ring, so the, the diamond rings, the real diamond came off the rings. Yes, it did come off the ring. And then my mother came through. My mother came through in her voice, and she used the word, my nickname, Jamie. She goes, Jamie, Jamie, Jamie. I love you. And no one knew my nickname, no one at all knew my nickname, and that was her voice, and uh, thank goodness we had a cassette player, and put, we recorded, of course, sounds, and I played that for my siblings, and they were just astounded, wow, that's mom, so uh, it was incredible, an incredible experience, um, it opened my mind up to there is indeed no no death whatsoever, uh, look forward to it, when the time comes, I look very forward to it, I think that the Leslie Flint Foundation uh, is a very important in institution. I think everybody should use it to help other people to open up their minds and hearts to realize that there is no death and that our thoughts, our words, and our actions really do count. Because as I said in many times through Leslie Flint seances, the conditions you find yourself will be those that you create based on how you lived your life, how you treated others. So treat them well. So I'm very happy to uh, just check in with you and tell you about Leslie Flint. 
one of the most incredible people I've ever met in my life. And down to earth. Capricorn man, very down to earth, black and white. No, really, very, very down, very real. So, hope you enjoy and listen to all of these tapes because they're incredible. Bye-bye.